My name is Neela and this is my story of how my family and I were extradited from Uganda to England. I was born and brought up in Kampala, Uganda where my family lived and had been there for several years. Um, I had have three brothers and two sisters. Um, my father ran a very successful carpentry business which he built up from scratch. In August of 1972, um, we had a shocking announcement which was made by the then dictator of uh, Uganda, uh, Idi Amin, uh, that he had a dream and he was wanted all the British Asians extradited within 90 days. First of all, we were all in shock, thinking that can't be true, um, but then realised that it wasn't a joke, uh, it was for real. And that's when we had to pack up everything and start thinking about moving. Um, if you weren't going to leave in 90 days, then you were going to be put in military camps and imprisonment and obviously um, brutality was ahead. So therefore what we had to do, in fact my father had to do was um, try and get all the passports ready. We were British citizens so we had, we were lucky enough to come here um, and accept it. Whereas there were a lot of people who were made um, stateless, you would say. It was a very scary moment um, at the time, leaving the place. Um, once, um, within 30 days, 30, 40 days, um, we were all ready um, uh, to leave for England, having to leave all our worldly possessions behind. Uh, my father had his own business, he had his, um, we had our own house that he had not built not long before we moved here. Been living in there for about five years. Um, everything built up from scratch was, we just had to leave everything. We weren't allowed to bring anything here. Then you were escorted by the military uh, to the airport, which was in itself quite scary because we had already heard stories um, of brutality and things like that going on um, when we, you, you were going to the airport. They would check everything. They didn't want you to take um, anything apart from the bag that you had um, with your clothes. So that was all you were allowed to take. and. Uh, 50 pounds worth of cash, so uh, they just wanted to make sure that we we're not taking anything else with us. And at, at one stage, I remember my sister being taken away um, to another room. They'd stopped us, they took her away, and that was one of the scariest moments I remember. And my parents being quite anxious because being a girl there was brutality, i.e. girls were raped in fact, which we had heard before, so that was quite 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 scary. But luckily um, she you know she, she she came back, nothing happened, they checked, nothing was taken away. So I suppose I could say that we were quite the lucky ones. I clearly remember landing um, at Stansted Airport on a very damp, cold September um, day. We were taken to a disused RAF um, camp in Suffolk, a place called Stradisor. Um, it was a quite a large place. Uh, you had uh, the place where we slept was just dormitories, uh, just rows and rows of um, beds 
you had no privacy, so you, you had several families in that whole room. There were several of these uh, long uh, halls, and you had to share the bathroom, um, the toilet, um, and there was no privacy. And living in a nice, coming from a nice place where everything was there, um, it, it was quite shocking to be put in this dilemma. We were in the camp for three months and uh, we weren't given any social housing like a lot of families were. So therefore my father asked my uncle to look for a private property um, and that's how we came about. Um, in January of um, 1973 we eventually made our way to um, Camden Town where we had rented a um, private house and stayed with uh, all my family, including my eldest brother who was married with a child. So there was um, uh, 11 of us in the family um, living in a three bedroom house. Though my brother and I adjusted to school life um, pretty well, dinner times were quite horrendous as uh, we were eligible for free school meals. We were given these special tokens and I remember going in the queue a few times um, and um, just didn't feel right. You, you knew that everyone was looking at you because you, you weren't well off. I can imagine how difficult it must have been for my dad having to go out and work for someone else, having run his own business for so many years and people working for him but he didn't have a choice and he, he, just, he just got on with life and he said this is how it's meant to be. We lived in Camden Town uh, for four years before moving to Elephant Castle south of the river uh, in a flat and to this day, 42 years on, my mother and my brother still live there.